Boom! Welcome. It is great to see you in person. Good afternoon. Welcome to the October 20th meeting of the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission. I will hereby call the meeting to order and uh, ask for the introductory recording, please. Before we begin the agenda, the Wichita Sedgwick County Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the Wichita Sedgwick County Board of Zoning Appeals would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this public hearing. For those in attendance, copies of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby. The planning commissions and the BZA bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning, subdivision, or variance application and his or her representatives to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please share your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the room. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. All speakers at the podium, please remove your face mask before speaking into the microphone. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the commission and the board will be retained by the secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking, but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please provide your contact information to the planning department. The planning commission and the board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on all the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be as courteous and concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available from the planning staff. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearings and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to the District Court. Thank you, Paul. Now I'd ask for a roll call and just a reminder to the commissioners, please use your microphones so you can be heard by those attending virtually. Yes, ma'am. Fox? Present. Duell? Here. McKay? Here. Green? Here. Bill Johnson? Here. Blick? Present. Nix? Here. Foster? Here. Warren? Here. Joe Johnson is absent. Miles? Here. Hartman? <clears throat> Cunningham? Here. Williams Bay? Here. I show 13 members present. Thank you. You'll note that we are deferring approval of the prior meeting minutes. They were rather lengthy given our six or five hour meeting or 10 hour meeting. Uh, so you'll receive them prior to the next packet. Uh, now we'll go through the agenda to identify those items that we can take on consent. Uh, item 2.1, subdivision case 2022-00011 has been deferred at the request of the applicant and will be heard on November 17th. 
Item 2.2, subdivision item 2022, 0034, near 63rd South and 143rd Street East. Does any commissioner here or virtual want to hear this item? Does any member of the public participating in chambers want to hear this item? Does anyone participating virtually from the public want to hear this item? Hearing none, we will take that item on consent. Item 2.3, subdivision item 2022 0036 at K96 and Ridge Road. Uh, Neil has a staff update. Could we hear that quickly now, Neil? I just wanted to uh, update everybody. The uh, original plat, there was some unresolved issues on two items. One was the cul-de-sac uh, right here. The applicant had proposed a cul-de-sac less than the required diameter. That has been changed to a hammerhead as shown right here. City Fire is okay with that configuration. Uh, there also were questions on the easements from uh, Evergy, and Evergy has modified those easement requests uh, just limited to the northeast corner of the plat. And they do want it posted in the record that uh, they will potentially acquire any other needed easements by separate instrument in the future. Any questions for Neil? Mr. Green? Yeah, um, I was, I've got, um, I spoke with Scott before the meeting. Um, I, with regards to a question on the approval of Estancia second edition, and I know I asked at, at our subdivision meeting if that, if there had been a street required there uh, into or onto um, uh, whatever that. Bridge Road, maybe. The plat to the south? Yeah, onto, yeah, Village Circle. Um, and I know that, that um, Mr. Lindeback, the agent, said that he recalled that discussion, and then at the very end he said that there was a gate that they're going to have on that. And I couldn't remember if the motion was made for a second for access or for a fire access. Um, and I believe that uh, staff is going through those minutes right now, and maybe Scott has an update. Yes, uh, so uh, after getting that request just a, a few moments before the meeting started, we've asked Amber Bias, our administrative staff, to listen to the recording and type out what the motion was from the subdivision meeting. So um, she's not come forward with that, so we do not have that available yet. So would you like to hear this case then and get that information? Yeah, but if we could hold off hearing it until later, until staff has had yeah, a right. chance to to go through that recording. Okay. So we will hear this case so that Amber's input can be provided later in the meeting, okay? Thank you Here, for your patience. 2.2, 2.3. Item 2.4, subdivision 2022-0052, 167th Street West and 37th Street North. Is there anyone on the commission present or virtual who would like to hear this item? Seeing none, anyone in chambers who would like to hear this item? Anyone participating virtually from the public who would like to hear this item? Subdivision 2022 0052. Hearing none, we'll take 2.4 on consent. Item 2.5, subdivision 2022 0053, 21st Street North and 159th Street East. Anyone on the commission who would like to hear this item? Anyone in chambers who would like to hear this item? Anyone in the public participating virtually who would like to hear this item? Hearing none, we'll take 2.5 on consent. Item 2.6, subdivision 
Subdivision 2022, 0054, 71st Street South, and 199th Street West. We do have a staff update on this item also. Neil? Uh, yes, at our meeting last week uh, for this case, the access was discussed. And the applicant has revised the access. Now they are proposing the access to be between uh, both lots with the joint access easement and County Public Works is okay with that relocated access. We will also get a driveway closure uh, for the existing driveway, which is just east of that opening. Thank you, Neil. With that information, does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone participating in chambers want to hear this case? Any member of the public participating virtually want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take 2.6 on consent. Motion to approve 2.2, 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Blick. Blick. You look so different, not in a box. And a second from Commissioner Green. Uh, any discussion? Ms. Commissioner McKay. Not a discussion, but 2.6, because it's been changed, should be taken separately. Uh, legal counsel, do we have a call on that? Do we need to vote on 2.6 separately? Justin Wagoner, Deputy County Counselor. Uh, I think it would probably be best for him to do that, yes. Okay, can I have a... Change my motion um, to approve 2.2, 2.4, 2.5. And this agreement from, agreement. so we have a adjustment to the motion from Commissioner Blick, agreement on the second by Commissioner Green. Any discussion at this point? Let's take a vote. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Hearing none, motion passes 12-0, 13-0. Make 13 a, zero now. Make a motion to approve 2.6. Second. Motion from Commissioner Blick, second from Commissioner Green. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Hearing none, motion passes 13 0. Thank you. Uh, public hearing vacation item. 2022 31 has been deferred and will be heard at the meeting on November 3rd, 2022. Moving on to public hearing items. 4.1, conditional use 2022 37 at 1419 North Fairview. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Okay. We will hear 4.1. Is the agent or applicant for 1419 North Fairview present? Yes? Okay, thank you. We will hear that case. Item 4.2, zoning case 2022 0052, uh, 16 315 West US Highway 54. Anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone from the public participating virtually want to hear this case? 16315 West US Highway 64, 54. Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. Item 4.3, zoning case 2022 0053 and conditional use case 2022 0038 located just south of 2041 North Jackson. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone from the public participating virtually want to hear this case? 2041 North Jackson. Hearing none, we'll take that case on consent. Item 4.4, zoning case 2022 0054 and conditional use 2022 0039, 167th West and Central. 
Does so anyone on the commission want to hear this case? I've got a, I've got a question for the county. I'm sorry. I've got a question for the county engineer on that, and I don't know if we need to hear the whole case or not. Do we have a county engineer present to take a question? Maybe virtual. Do we have a county engineer online? Lynn Packer was on earlier. Ty Ben or Paul, can you expand the list of the people who are in attendance virtually? Technology. Yes, technology, we love it. So Lynn, if you're there, can you speak up? Um, I will give him a call. Okay, and then maybe we could just do a modified staff report and hear this case. Does that sound? You, you may go through and ask see if, if we can anybody get him. wants to hear. We can get him. Madam Chair, you might go through and ask to see if there's anybody in the public who wants to hear this case. Okay. Does anyone from the public want to hear this case, zoning 2022-00054, 167th Street? Anyone in present? Okay, we do have persons present, so we will hear that case. Thank you for keeping me on track here. Um, at this point, we will recess the MAPC meeting to go. Oh, Oh, yes. Could I entertain a motion? Uh, microphone, please. You approve agenda items 4.2 and 4.3. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Warren, a second from Commissioner Miles. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Those items are approved. And now we will recess the MAPC and proceed to the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for October 20th. Um, first item of business would be the approval of the prior BZA minutes, and I show that Commissioner Hartman was absent. Move to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner McKay. Second. Second tie goes to Commissioner Miles. Uh, all in favor of approving minutes as received, aye. Aye. Oppose, aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, minutes are approved, 12. Uh, abstention, 1. Minutes approved, 12, 0, 1. Uh, BZA case 2022, 45. Philip Zevenbergen will present. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. BZA 2245 is a request to increase the height of an uh, off-site billboard sign located at a property um, south of East Hydraulic or south of East 37th Street, within a uh, quarter mile west of North Hydraulic. The sign currently exists on the property. Uh, this is near the North Junction, which. Uh, we've had similar cases in the area where KDOT has been acquiring right-of-way. Uh, the property on which the sign is located was acquired by KDOT, and they're requiring the sign to move about 82 feet to the west. The applicant is requesting a height increase from 43 feet to 55 feet, um, predicated on the um, future expansion of the highway with the concerns of a future bridge over 37th Street and then when they redo the interchange down where K96 goes to the east of those um, ramps and bridges uh, getting taller with concerns of uh, future visibility of the sign. The sign currently has gone through administrative adjustments to um, get to the 43 foot height uh, there's provisions in the sign code that allow for administrative approval to allow for signs to be 20 feet above an abutting elevated highway. Uh, the sign has gone through several iterations and increases in height um, up until this point. The uh, maximum height of a sign typically is only 30 feet by the sign code. 
And so they have been allowed to increase the height of their sign already um, in its current state to 43 feet administratively. There are uh, three signs, off-site signs, in the uh, immediate vicinity. One is approximately 920 feet north. Uh, another one is about 1,400 feet south and another one about 1,800 feet south, all of which are on the east side of the highway. There are no off-site signs on the west side of the highway in this general vicinity. I think the nearest one is south of the K96 interchange to the south. The 37th Street Bridge, um, Paul, if you want to go to the uh, site plan, actually, yeah, we don't have control. Um, Thank you. Um, here's the current location of the sign. As you can see, they're going to be moving it to the west. The highway bridge of 37 streets, about 575 feet north of the sign. Um, the K96 ramp begins about 200 feet south of the sign, and then it starts to increase in elevation as it goes farther south and then curves to the east. One thing that just is more background general information that is governed during the permitting process is KDOT has the ability to restrict the overall height of the sign to 55 feet, but that's as it's measured from the grade elevation of the highway. So if the, um, the um, height of the, if the elevation of the land on which the sign is located is lower than that, they can go taller than 55 feet. They just have to comply with that. That's again per, um, during the permitting process. The surrounding context um, is a general industrial zoning. There is a public park to the west. There's a previous variance request on this site that allowed the sign to be as close as it is to the public park with the stipulation that it would not get closer to the park than 500 feet. It's proposed new location uh, will still be farther than 500 feet from that park, so they're not in violation of that. There are two, two of the three off-site signs on the east side of the highway have received variance approvals for increases in height to 60 feet. Very similar situations where KDOT acquired right-of-way, the new locations of those signs um, got pushed to the east, putting them behind mature tree lines, those signs were approved to be increased in height to have visibility over those mature trees. The five criteria for granting a variance when we review this, um, I won't necessarily go through each individual one in um, detail. A lot of the analysis comes back to the same amount of information. Um, number one being the uniqueness. Staff agrees that it is a unique situation that KDOT did acquire the right of way. The sign does have to move. However, staff doesn't necessarily feel that it has been demonstrated that the visibility, one, at this point in time, in which the highway is configured is actually going to be an issue. Um, there was no demonstration of how tall the, 30, the bridge over 37th Street, how much higher the highway is going to be, nor how much taller the interchange to the south is going to be. There was no exhibit provided to show where the um, obstruction of visibility is going to take place. In addition, something to consider is when the sign is relocated and as the highway project continues into the future, if the level of the highway increases in height, there is that administrative relief that allows them to apply for an administrative adjustment and increase the uh, height of their sign to be, again, 20 feet above the highway. They've already done it now, and they're capped at 43 feet, but if the height of the highway increases, they're allowed to apply again to increase the height of their sign um, for the purpose of visibility. They're requesting 55 feet, and overall staff doesn't feel that it's been demonstrated as to the need for the 55 feet. At this point in time, it's not um, understood when exactly the bridge and the overpass near it will be reconstructed. There's no information as to what height those um, bridge and overpass will be and how it actually will be obstructing the sign view if it's not at 55 feet. So overall staff does not feel that like the five conditions of approval have been met and feel that 
in the future, the applicant has the opportunity to seek administrative relief to be 20 feet above an elevated highway at the point at which the highway is then elevated. They're asking for a height increase when it has not been determined when the construction of this portion of the phase of the interchange um, is scheduled, nor when it will be clean, completed, nor has it been demonstrated actually how the height will be obstructing the view of the sign um, at that point in time. With that, I can go through the uh, different slides. So again, here's the site plan. Uh, next picture, please. This is on 37th Street looking south. So this is the uh, I-135 um, and is going, if you're going this way, you'll go over top of 37th Street. This is the sign in question. It has not been relocated yet. Its new location will be pushed 82 feet this direction. Next picture. This is from the K96 ramp south of the site looking north. Again, you can see the highway going up over top of 37th Street this direction. Here's the off ramp um, from K96, which curls around this direction to go east. Um, and so you can see it's going to be uh, moved about 82 feet this direction. There are trees at this location, but according to their site plan where they were going to put the sign, it was not going to be behind those trees. Next picture. This is on hydraulic looking west. Um, you can see the elevated part of the highway and you can see the sign over top of that. Next picture. This is north of the site, just around the general vicinity. Next picture. This is looking from Ohio Street to the east. This is the public park uh, that the sign is. This is a hedgerow of mature trees that um, actually obstructs the sign from the view of the public park. Next picture. And again, the aerial image um, sign being here, we'll have to move a little bit this direction. And I can, we have not heard any um, public comment regarding this and I can stand for any questions. Commissioners, any questions for Philip? Commissioner Hartman. Yes. As far as the height goes, what's the reasoning of setting the height at uh, whatever it is now? At, at 55. I honestly don't know. Like I said, there was no information given to, do, to give evidence as to why 55 feet would be sufficient and why there couldn't be any adjustment to the height in the future when the elevation of the highway actually increases. In, in, in general, there was, there was really no given justification as to why 55 feet was, was sufficient. But they're going to have to move their existing sign right now. Correct. So they're going to have to come back there and reconstruct. Likely. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Nix, did, did you have a question didn't, also? Didn't you say the three signs on the east side uh, are all 60 feet? Did you say that or not? Two out of the three are. Um, two of them have re received variances. We heard one of those uh, at the last planning commission meeting. Uh, one farther north or farther south has already been approved. The farthest one south, the one 1,800 feet away, uh, is at standard height. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll call the applicant or agent, please, and you'll have 10 minutes. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, members of the Planning, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals, excuse me, my name is Greg Ferris. Uh, I represent uh, Central Christian Church, who is the owner of this property. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I won't go over the uniqueness. I agree with staff. Um, I'm going to just go straight to the issues. You guys have lots of uh, other things you have to deal with. Uh, it would be nice if you could build a, a billboard and then just go crank it up when when the uh, uh, state comes through and, and does their construction. Uh, based on the modeling that we did, guessing the height of this based on where the state uh, projects, and again, they don't have this done. We have to look in the future or we have to try to figure out, you can't, I mean, you have to put a pole in the ground, you have to engineer it. You don't really just raise these up. It just doesn't happen that way. That's not the way you build a billboard sign. You're not even allowed to have the sign stick out of the top, so you, you wouldn't do that. The big problem here is this as well is going to be raised. We know that, and so there weren't any photos that show coming 
uh, northbound and the obstruction that the higher elevation will show. Um, so we don't think that we're asking for anything unreasonable here. Um, this is a this is truly a unique. There may be one other in town that is similar, but this is truly a unique um, situation. Uh, the owner of this sign constructed this sign and donated it totally to um, uh, his helping hands. Um, everything about this sign is, even I'm giving my time to this, I'm not even charging them for this because it's such a worthwhile organization. Uh, and any dollar in revenue they lose really is a detriment to the community. And and if you know the business, it's all about visibility. So I don't disagree that, you know, we could come back in the future after they raise this up. But even that might not be the help because the way the code is written, you have to be perpendicular. So if this particular spot right here is not raised high enough <clears throat> to where we could come in and ask for the 20 feet. I'd have to come back to the BZA with a bunch of photos of the new road and all of those things. And then we'd have to go back in and reconstruct this sign uh, that we just reconstructed. So I think that it's a, it's a reasonable request. We are shorter than the sign that is uh, directly across the highway uh, and uh, to, the, to the north a few uh, uh, hundred feet. <clears throat> So I don't believe that there's anything in this application uh, that doesn't fit the cri five criteria. Uh, I think we've demonstrated all of the requirements and the fact that they haven't raised this yet and that we don't have the design and they haven't raised this yet and we don't have the design. We know uh, the state has committed to us that they are raising this. Uh, so we had to do some some gyrations and figure out visibilities coming up over an overpass um, and to get the eight seconds of visibility that requires and there's all kinds of things that go into that. So rather than come back in the future after we have these things solved and then try to figure out how to raise the sign, it made the most sense now that we have to move it, that this was the appropriate time to get the appropriate height. Um, with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Questions <clears throat> for the applicant? Commissioner Blick? Mr. Ferris, I remember when we uh, approved this the first time. So when you have a pole, <clears throat> there's no really extension. You're just putting a brand new pole up to, to get to the height that you need. That's correct. We're, we're, you, you, I guess you could pull that sign off, put a sleeve in, but I, I wouldn't, you, you'd have, it's just really, I mean, it's, is it engineeringly possible? Yes. Um, is it logical? Absolutely not. Um, and we're not asking for a sign that's taller than any of the signs that are in this immediate area. So, um, it, I'm not going to tell you it's impossible for us to raise it up in the future. Remember, this gentleman is donating uh, this work to this um, to this sign. He's not charging them to move this sign either. Um, so it's it's all a little bit different than if I was making if I had a, was representing a signs company that's making uh, you know ten thousand dollars a month um, and putting that in their pocket. Uh, this sign is making ten or twelve thousand dollars a month, and putting it back into the community in this area where there's a great need that needs to be taken care of. So every dollar is going back right into the community. It's a little different than asking somebody in the future that is making money. Oh well, you you made a lot of money on this sign. You can now go um, and move that. So I, th I think that's a little different. Mr. Ferris, is, the, is KDOT compelling the movement of this sign immediately, seeing as the project's in the future? Have they given you a hard deadline to get the move completed? Yeah, last week. I mean, they want it done now. They, they, they are taking the property in the, in the immediate future, I mean, like right now. Is, so, there, is there a <coughs> potential, since you're projecting the possible elevation, that it would be even higher than what you've predicted, and therefore you'd need to raise the sign again as a no, result? And, and that's why, I mean, I, and I asked this question. I said, could you live with 50 feet? And they said, probably, but we're not knowing we would rather have the ability to be 55. Um, so if you wanted to approve 50 today, I, that would be probably okay with them. But 55 made the most sense as they did their, their geometric modeling as to where they thought um, the, um, 
the height of that highway and the height of the, of the uh, south portion too. You remember, it's not just the 37th Street Bridge that's being raised, it's the interchange as well, so. You've um, answered my question, thank you. Uh, any other questions from the commission for the applicant? Hearing none, is there any member of the public present who would like to speak on this item? Any member of the public participating virtually who'd like to speak on this item? I'd bring it back then to the commission for any discussion. Commissioner Foster. I understand that, um, you know, this profit from the sign is going for good works and that's all nice, but the next case we get where somebody wants to have a, a variance to raise a sign beyond the norm because conditions might become unique in the future I don't think we can then say, well, you're not charitable, so we can't give you that. We're required to treat everybody fairly. I don't think the engineering challenge of creating a sign with a foundation that would allow future extension of the poles is all that enormous an engineering feat. I think it could be done. I'm mostly concerned about setting a precedent here for there's just there's too many of the five conditions that aren't being met because we're speculating about what might happen and we just don't know. Any other comment? Commissioner Warren? I'm going to take a little bit of the opposite side. It's, it's not so much that it might happen, it's likely to happen. We've got a situation where we're likely to see the highway raise and to do something twice, it's a fairly expensive project to do twice when you have the opportunity to do it once makes sense to do it now I would hate to be the ones that, that coming down the line some says what were they thinking you know we just did this sign you know six months ago or a year ago or two years ago and now we're taking it down and raising it back up because because of the highway didn't they know that it, this was coming we don't know the exact amount but we we've got a pretty good idea that that it's going to raise and so to cause somebody to do that twice does not make sense to me and I would agree with that up to a point, but the the highway needs to clear 37th Street. How much higher are they likely to go? I don't see that we're talking 10 or 15 feet of additional height. It's going to be, I would guess, maybe a few feet. And I just don't know how much additional height this particular sign would need to clear a few extra feet of visibility. Commissioner McKay. A number of years ago, we had a similar situation at Webb Road and Kellogg. At that time, they didn't know if Kellogg was going to go, Webb Road was going to go over or under. And the people that owned the property on the southeast corner was going to put up a sign. And they wanted to move it back off and to the south, closer to their property. And we, in all of our wisdom, said, no, you can't break the sign code. So we didn't do it. We left it. And within two years, we had to go there. We, as the public, had to go in and pay them for their sign and to, to move it back to where it is today. Because at that time, we didn't know exactly where the street was going to go. And if Mr. Ferris feels that 55 feet would suffice, this is being created by the public or the highway department or whatever it might be. That's the only thing I can say. And I agree with what you're saying. You'd like to change, but uh, I've seen this happen before that we're, you know, we're trying to follow the rules right to the nth degree, and uh, sometimes we need to use some common sense as far as whether we're doing it right or wrong at this point in time, and rather than having to do it twice. Commissioner Hartman. Yeah, with a with a sign like this, visibility is everything. I mean, why would you put something there that you would have to move later on, and and a little bit higher, I don't see how that affects or you know, harms anyone. So I'm in favor of moving it up. Are we ready to put forth a motion on this item? Commissioner Warren? I would uh, move to approve the request for the reasons stated during the, during the discussion. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Warren, a second, yes. Uh, Second from Commissioner Blick and a hand raise from our director. 
Uh, sorry, just the same message is just that I, I interpret that to mean that you find that all five factors to issue a variance exist at the site or in this particular case. And can I assume so, that you're also making a motion to include the conditions listed in the staff report as part of the motion? Yes. And do we need some clarification then on how the uh, condition are met to approve a variance? That the likelihood of the project is that the project is very likely to occur in the near future. Okay, let's have a roll call vote on this one, please. Yes, ma'am. Fox? Aye. Duel. Aye. McKay? Aye. Green? Aye. Bill Johnson? Aye. Blick? Aye. Nix? Aye. Foster? No. Warren? Aye. Joe Johnson is absent. Miles? Aye. Hartman? Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Williams Bay? Aye. I show the motion passes. 12 to 1. 12 to 1, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, we'll now uh, conclude the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting and return to the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission meeting uh, for item 2.3. Neil, do we have you again? This is... Uh, 2022 0036 condition subdivision item. Hey, Neil. Uh, yep. Scott Wadle, planning staff. Before you get started, I'll go ahead and distribute the handouts of uh, the rest. Thank you, Philip. Was staff able to find out from the minutes? Yes, yeah, so what uh, Philip is passing around right now are uh, hard copies, and they are copies of the subdivision uh, committee meeting from June 27th, 2019. And uh, there's a copy of the motion and what motion was made and approved as part of that meeting. And then uh, you are also getting copies of the staff report for the subdivision uh, meeting and also for the MAPC meeting. Uh, the Estancia Commercial Second Edition uh, is located on the southeast corner of K96 North Ridge Road, encompasses 37 acres, uh, 11 lots. Zoning is GC and LC. This was reviewed by the subdivision committee last week, recommended to be approved. Uh, public works per item A require the applicant to extend water and sewer. To the lots, drainage plan was approved by city stormwater per item E. Uh, sidewalks were required along the street frontage. A village circle right here was extended into this plat. And that's where the uh, sidewalks would be required. Uh, I already discussed the revised configuration of the turnaround to a hammerhead. And the guarantee will be needed for paving of that street to the business street standard. And this is a CUP also associated with the plat. We would need a CUP adjustment uh, for that. Uh, Mr. Green qu questioned as to the connection required from the plat to the south into this plat. And the information that you have there should show that in the 2019 uh, plat, there was a requirement for an emergency access easement for fire 
uh, to extend to Village Circle. Again, this is Village Circle, but it's it was extended for this plat. There we go. <laughs> Uh, the exact location of that emergency access was not specified in the motion, so the applicant does have a discretion to uh, uh, to place that as long as there is a connection to Village Circle in the new plat. Okay, Commissioner Green's noting that you've answered his question. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. I just okay. I couldn't remember if it was an emergency access or if it, it was an actual street access. Staff wasn't able to remember at the time, okay. but our uh, agent was, and so okay. this confirms that. So I'm good. Okay. Any other questions for staff on this item? Does anyone from the public want to speak on this item? Anyone from the public participating virtually want to speak on this item? Estancia's second. Div Addition, I would uh, bring it back to the commission for any discussion or a motion. I make a motion to approve for staff's recommendation. Also, I appreciate the staff for providing this to us also at short notice. Motion to approve. I'll second. Uh, a second from Commissioner Hartman. The motion was by Commissioner Blick. Any discussion? And I, too, want to thank staff for their quick response to my question and uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Any discussion? I'd call for a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Nay. Hearing none, motion passes 13-0. Moving on to conditional use item 22-00037. Uh, and it looks like we have JR to present. No, we don't have JR to present. Oh, hello. You know, movement in the crowd leads me to believe things. So, Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christina Reith, uh, Associate Planner. This is case number CON 22 The applicant is Miguel Chavez, and he is requesting a conditional use on his property to allow multifamily residential. It's currently zoned TF3, two-family residential district, and the site size is 0.26 acres, and his property is located at 1419 North Fairview Avenue. The proposed use is a total of three dwelling units on site, and we are recommending an approval with conditions. So um, as you can see here at zone TF3, um, on site is a structure that's a single family residential dwelling. And then um, let's just go straight to the uh, site photos, actually. We'll walk through those. Yeah, so this is the building here. Um, it was originally constructed as a duplex back in the day, but it's currently in use as a single family residential dwelling. Next, next slide, please. Um, this is uh, looking at the accessory structure from the back of the house. Next picture, please. And this is the back of the single family residential dwelling. Next picture, please. Um, so this is looking at the um, accessory structure that's already been uh, constructed on site. Um, the subject property is a contributing building within the Park Place Fairview Historic District, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, before I started here, this structure was approved by the Historic Preservation Board per case HPC 2020-00032. Uh, um, according to Section 3, uh, dash 6C of the Unified Zoning Code. Multifamily is allowed in TF3 two-family residential district zoning at a maximum density of 14 and a half dwelling units per acre. And the, the applicant is requesting a total of three units, so there would be the single family residential dwelling, and then there's this two-story residential structure with one unit on, on, on each floor. So it's a total of three units on 0.26 acres, which is less than the maximum density permitted. The proposed use is in conformance with the Community Investments Plan, as well as the Places for People Plan. Um, strategy 5 within the Places for People Plan states that um, the Strategy 5 is uh, providing a diversity of housing options to attract new residents that allow the existing residents to remain in the established central area. And this is, would be a small-scale development that would provide housing options that might 
otherwise not be immediately available in the area. It also aligns with strategy six, encouraging infill and redevelopment that is contextual to the environment in which it is uh, occurring. So the proposed conditional use would allow for the infill of an additional, uh, two additional dwelling units. And it also aligns with the goals of the Midtown Neighborhood Plan. One of the goals identified in the plan is preserve and enhance historically, historically designated homes and districts, specifically encouraging infill construction that is similar to the historic or historically eligible structures and construction, style, scale, and design through the use of similar materials to maintain the existing neighborhood character. As I mentioned before, this was approved by the Historic Preservation Board for its design. Based on the information, uh, information available at the time, uh, staff recommends that the conditional use be approved subject to the following conditions. So the site is limited to a maximum of three dwelling units between the two separate structures. And uh, the development of maintenance of the site shall be in conformance with the approved site plan. The applicant will obtain all applicable permits. And if the zoning administrator finds there is a violation of any of the conditions, declare that the conditional use be null and void. Um, let's skip to the, let's go back to the floor plans, please. So this would, oh, so this would be the first floor. Um, I believe there would be parking in the garage as well as a parking pad on the outside. And this would be an efficiency unit with its own um, mechanical room, shower, washer, laundry, and dryer. Next slide, please. And this would be the second floor, which would also have a bathroom, and there would be a spiral staircase going up to the second floor. And with that, I will stand for questions. Questions for staff? Commissioner Blick? Yeah, I just have a quick question. I know it's a this looks like it's pretty updated, and you said the historical preservation. Is there a certain type of facade that they were supposed to have? Um, I can't speak to that because that was before my time with the Historic Preservation Board. Um, but my understanding is that the design inside and out was already approved. Thank you. Commissioner McKay? Yes, would you go over, go back to the zoning map? Yes. Mine's small. I'm trying to read, in it B to the south? Yes, yeah, so there is a small sliver of B multifamily, or no, MF-29 multifamily, and B multifamily. But between the B and the, the property we're talking about, is a little sliver of MF-29? Is that yes, what? that's correct. That's where you're... Thank you. Any other questions for staff at this time? Uh, the, I do. Okay. Uh, I would, Susan, go ahead. Commissioner yeah, Cunningham. Um, when that design was approved, was that for a garage or for a dwelling? Um, I can't speak to that, but I will look that up and get back to you. Okay. Okay. In the meantime, can we call any other questions? If not, then I would call for the agent or applicant, please. And if you'd state your name and address for the record, then you'll have 10 minutes to tell us about your project. My name is Miguel Chavez. I uh, own the property on 1419 North Fairview. Uh, pretty much she explained everything what we're planning to do. It's been approved, and I try to follow everything because I love the area. I love the story of Wichita, the story of uh, houses and everything. Um, me and my wife decided to do that mm, separate building thinking in our future, because if you can see the property have a lot of steps and things like that, and we say, well, we have the building, it's been approved. We also did the designs to continue with the same design on the historical, and we can have a four plan that we can be able to walk in case we just get to that age where it's gonna be difficult and still take care of the property uh, as well. And that's why we decided to ask for the permit and continue doing it the right way with the historical and also with the city of Wichita code. I don't know if that answered your questions or. Okay. Uh, anyone on the commission have questions for the applicant? So I'm understanding you built that accessory unit behind the house. Uh, you're just now preparing to make it 
so that it could be occupied. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Um, Commissioner McKay? Not a question of the applicant, but I'll, I'll talk, ask the staff in a minute. Okay. All right. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, anyone present from the public who would like to speak on this item? Okay. Would you please come forward? State your name and address for the record, and then you'll have three minutes, and we'll start when you get up there. My name is Michaela Welch. Um, I live at 1346 North Emporia, and I am the newly elected president of Historic Midtown. Um, I've been working online for a while, but this is my first opportunity to come before you face to face. Um, I've had a number of my neighbors reach out to me about concerns around not only this property, but others that are under construction. But since we're here talking about this today, the concern is that there's already been a lot of changes made to this property talking about the windows, the vinyl sidings. Those were all approved before my time, before others' times. But um, we're starting to lose the integrity of what this building was. It was contributing. I guarantee you that if you were to have it looked at now, it would no longer be contributing to the neighborhood because of the changes that have been made. The other big issue that we have is the parking. Um, it already has on-yard parking. I don't know what it's technically called, but there are parking spots in the front yard. And that's only with two. Um, homes in it right now we had a third we're going to have additional parking challenges for that location um, I've had a number of neighborhoods come to me and say that we, they were fine with it being a duplex it was originally a duplex but they don't want to further degrade what we're having happen in this neighborhood I understand infill is a concern and something that is being looked at but I think it's where it makes sense. And when we've asked neighbors to save the neighborhood, to invest in the neighborhood, we then need to support them when they come forward and say that this is not a project that they're supportive of. Any questions for the speaker? Commissioner McKay. Ma'am, are you representing the home? Are you a spokesman for the historic district? Or is you just a few people? It's, this is official representation. I am president right. of the historic Midtown. I understand that, but are you yes. representing? Yeah, I'm representing historic Midtown. Thank you. And historic Midtown is separate from the historic preservation board, is Correct. that? Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Com um, Commissioner Williams Bay? Yes, uh, you said that the parking is an issue. Is there, uh, Jason, is there room to get parking in the rear of this, this structure? Um, I, I do believe that they have some additional parking that might be in the back, but as it stands right now with just two units in it, they're already parking on the front yard. And th that's actually a planned location because it has cement out there for them to park there. Um, I understand that's a separate issue of where we allow parking in the city, but if we're going to add additional people to this lot, we're going to have additional vehicles, and that's a big concern for our, my neighbors. Okay, any other questions for our speaker? Thank you. Is there one, anyone else present who would like to speak to this item? Please come forward, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. Thank you. Madam Chair, Commission, my name is Greg Kite. I'm a local attorney and president of the Historic Preservation Alliance of Wichita and Sedgwick County. We happen to own the house, two uh, houses to the north at 1437 North Fairview. I will tell you that a few years back at tremendous cost, we picked up and moved that house, a two and a half story Victorian from Topeka to the current location where it resides now. We did that to become part of this historic Park Place Fairview District. As indicated by my uh, colleague with Historic Midtown, we do have concerns about this expansion. This is a wonderful neighborhood that is, is historically important and architecturally significant. What is happening here with parking in the front yard and additional uh, occupancy of that building does not inure itself with this historic district. We oppose this. Uh, we don't think it's part and parcel of what this district ought to be. 
Um, it's one of a very few districts uh, in this community where we have this kind of historic importance and architectural significance. Um, I appreciate the fact that the city's historic preservation board has taken a look at this. Uh, it, this district is, of course, on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, this structure at 1419 North Fairview is currently a contributing structure. However, I doubt, as my predecessor indicated, whether or not it still conforms with that. It almost seems to me as if before becoming a zoning issue, it's kind of like getting the batter out of the batter's box. Are we there? Have we met what this district is supposed to be? Should we retain what we have in, ter in terms of architectural significance and historical importance? I don't think this lends to that at all. Uh, and so we are very fervently opposed to this expansion of what we believe is a wonderful historic district. And I'd entertain any questions anyone might have. Questions for the speaker? Is your primary concern, uh, Mr. Kite, the parking in the front yard, if that were required to be changed such that all parking was in the back, would that have a bearing on your concern about this particular property, or are there other issues? I think that's an excellent observation that, that you're making. Parking that's out front, as again my esteemed colleague indicated, is not an appropriate way for a neighborhood to have for parking vehicles. I think certainly having the parking required in the back is a step in the right direction. But at the same time, this was originally and historically a duplex. Now we're going beyond that. Now we're changing things. And change can be fine if it's in moderation, but when it starts to change the historical importance, and particularly here, the architectural significance of this building, which is what's going on, that's when I think you don't want to open up Pandora's box, because then, where do we put on the brakes next? Are, are you aware of other housing in the area that's got more than two units on the property? No, I'm not, actually. Uh, the MF24 or 29 that's there, is that occupied? That sliver we identified, does anyone know? From the aerial, it looks like it's it's it may be zoned differently, but it's a parcel that's a single residential parcel. Okay. Some of those houses were boarding houses at one time, if I understand correctly, and they might have had multiple, uh, a higher density at that time. So that was a part of that district at one time. When these houses had to survive World okay. War One and World War II, you're exactly right. They were often cut up. Yeah. But okay. for the most part, they have been taken back to original, which okay. is the way it ought to be, not changing it from okay. original. Thank you. Any other questions for the speaker, Commissioner Warren? Yes, sir. I, I used to have a friend that lived uh, a couple, about a block and a half north of this. It seemed to me like there were a number of properties that had parking in the front. Is, would you have an idea of what percentage of properties that currently ha allow parking in the front? You know, from the uh, location 1437 North Fairview, where our two and a half story Victorian house is set, I'm not aware of any parking in the front, particularly not in the front yard. Um, I can please stand to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just not aware of that in that area in the three or four blocks north or south of that location. Thank you. Uh, Scott, do you have any insight? Yeah, I just would like to have JR share a staff comment about parking okay. in the front okay. yard. Thank you. JR? JR Cox, Metropolitan Planning Department, for the record. Uh, parking in the front yard setback in residential zoning districts is generally not permitted, it's, it's illegal. Um, however, Nonconformity can be involved. I have no idea sitting here whether this is a legal or an illegal situation, but in general, parking is not um, permitted. There are exceptions. Just in looking at the pictures and the aerials, it looks like the exceptions probably wouldn't apply if this were something new. So if that's of any help. And JR, that is generally in residential districts, is that correct? The, that would be correct in residential zoning districts, not the heavier districts. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Commissioner Blick. I know in the past we've we've looked at uh, assisted living homes, and we've had the discussion where there's been like a half moon driveway in the front yard, and and a lot of the neighbors didn't like that because of excessive um, vehicles. But then we've been directed that if somebody wanted to just pave their whole front yard, they can park in their front yard. Is that not correct? 
I guess the technical answer would be it depends on the zoning district, but assuming it's residentially zoned, that would not be correct. Circular, circular drives are permitted under the zoning code to be in the front yard setbacks. Thank you so much. Appreciate that clarity. Yes, sir. Commissioner Williams Bay. Just for my clarification, if the parking was eliminated in the front yard, would that re help resolve? You use the microphone, please, Mr. Kite, so the participants virtually can hear you and the recording. As the Madam Chair indicated uh, earlier about that, that's a step in the right direction. That's not the only issue here. That's, that's I'll use the word, it's a contributing issue here, but it doesn't really solve the overall problem. And that is we are now deviating from what has been a longstanding historic district, and we've tried to keep yeah, that yeah, district within yeah. those you've guidelines. Answered, yeah. You've answered the question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, is there anyone else from the public present who would like to speak on this item? Anyone from the public participating virtually who would like to speak on this item? Here, none, we can have the applicant please return to the podium for a response to the concerns that you've heard. And you have two minutes for this presentation. Thank you. Well, when I asked for the permit, like I say, I went to the historical district. They approve it. I did it. I have maybe 10 neighbors that they say, thank you that you did this to this house. Now, I did also that for the parking because we have a church across the street and I know they need the parking. And every time that they have service, we, it's difficult for us to, to park. And I said, why not? They approve it. And I was thinking I was also help the church so they can have an extra parking. But if the parking is an issue, I will do whatever it takes to make this gentleman happy, you know? And I hope if it's a problem, then just tell me what that I need to do so I can just live in peace. That's all what I can say. Thank you. Okay, questions for the speaker. Please remain, we have a couple questions for you. Go ahead, Commissioner Foster. Looking at the aerial, do I understand correctly that there's a driveway that goes along the north edge of the property into the backyard? Yes. But there's no alley behind this, correct? There's, there appears to be sort of a private drive that's part of the church parking area, but that's not a public alley, is it? It's not a public, I uh, really don't know. Okay. Uh, no, but I have uh, access to the back, also to the alley. Okay. So. Um, Commissioner Cox, or Staff Member Cox, did you have a comment on that? Yeah, I, unless I misunderstood, I think you were suggesting the property to the west is a church, and I don't believe it's a church. The property to the west is a nursing facility, I believe. Okay, my, my mistake, the floor plan looks sort of churchish to me, but the point <laughs> is there there is no alley behind this property, though there is a driveway parallel to the back lot line that appears to serve that building to the west. That was what I was trying to clarify, but thank you. Okay. Whatever the building is. Any other, uh, Commissioner Blick? So right now there's on-street parking, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's on-street, but there is also parking in the front yard that's happening right now too? Yes, I have uh, two parking space in there. And two and parking spaces in there. And what you were saying is you were parking in the yard to, to help the church out because of the street, because people Correct. park in the street? Is the, that what the, you were the, saying? The church is right across of my house. Okay. That kind of clarified things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions for the speaker? Yes. Com um, Commissioner Cunningham? Yeah. We referred to your building being approved by the, by the preservation board. Was it then a garage? plan or a dwelling plan? Uh, when we get it was first for the garage. And then we did the changes with them. When Kathy Morgan was on the, uh, the head of the border. Okay. Uh, okay. JR. 
sorry to interrupt again. Uh, I do want to clarify that the church use of this property for parking is not legal. Yes, sir. Commissioner Foster. Yes, sir, I can. The church using this property for parking, frankly, front, rear, side, does not matter, um, yards, is not legal currently. Uh, a clarification. Do members of the church park in your front yard on the concrete, or you park there so that there's street parking available for the church members? Okay. Correct. All right. That would be legal. Correct. Right. Commissioner Foster, you have a question? Okay, just for would you be willing to adjust your front yard so that all the parking for all three units was in the backyard or in the garage? Sure, whatever I need to do. I mean, if it's not a problem for them, I was thinking that was Nick, the way I did it, you know. But if it's a problem, I'm willing to do whatever they want me to do on my okay. property. Thank you. Commissioner Hartman? I have a question for Scott. What is the requirement for a, a duplex with an accessory apartment? What's the parking requirement? I'm going to turn to Christina, who put together the staff report on this one. Thank you for your testimony, Christina. Oh, you. So this is a conditional use to allow multifamily, and so that's 1.25 parking spaces per efficiency in one bedroom dwelling unit, and 1.75 parking spaces per two bedroom or larger dwelling unit. So um, it's technically 4.25. We rounded it down to four parking spaces. And how many of those can be attributed to street parking? Any? Zero. 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 Okay. It's all off street parking for those units would require four spaces. Yes, but that can be reduced through an administrative adjustment. Okay. Commissioner Williams Bay. Is there room in the rear of this structure for four parking places? The applicant says yes. Do you want him to come up or? The applicant indicates there is. We'll accept that. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Green? And JR, the parking that is illegal uh, in the front yard, that becomes uh, an enforcement issue, does it not? Yes, sir. That would be correct. <clears throat> Assuming it is illegal and not somehow non-conforming. Okay. Correct. Okay, thank you. Commissioner McKay. Looking at Dario's photo, the JR or somebody tell me, can you, as long as you're off of public right away, could they concrete the front yard? As long as they're, the reason why I'm saying is because the building to, to the north, setback line is way further to the east than the house that we're presently looking at. Probably enough space to park in front of that across there and not be in the right of way. Is that possible? The, the front yard is not supposed to have parking in it, and it's also not supposed to be surfaced unless it can have parking in it, a driveway, for instance. I thought did it did have a driveway in it. There's parking in the street right there. But to pave the entire front yard and, and just park, the answer would be no, that would not be legal. Did that answer your question, Commissioner McKay? Okay. Um, have, yes. The gentleman's talking about putting it in the back. The building that's an X in the back is a nursing home. Correct. And the one next to it is a quick trip or a liquor store. I don't remember which. And the one to the south of it is a car repair place with the church. Is it possible? I think that alley between 13th and the nursing home is paved. Could that be utilized as a driveway if they put it in the back? I'm only looking at the aerial that I'm seeing. I don't think that's a platted alley, Commissioner. John, I think it looks like there's a driveway problem. back to the backyard. Well, they wouldn't. They wouldn't it's need not access from as the a property to the right west. Away. You're saying you're directly behind the nursing home. That's not a driveway. I mean, it's not an alley, paved alley. If you look at the little yellow lines, that indicates the parcel lines, and there's only one of them. So no, that I'm, is part of the. 
nursing home parcel. It's not a public right of way, I think. Okay, but I've, I've looked at these enough where they put an imprint over the top of the picture Blake. and it's not always in the right spot. That's I, was, I was just going to refer to J.R. Cox because he was starting to talk about that on the parcel lines. So the way I'm reading this map, and I wish we had a, our GIS up where we could see it and blow it up, but um, Commissioner, it appears that the east property line of the nursing home is the same line as the west property line of the parcel involved. There is no, there is no distinction between the two. There's no okay. intervening access or public way. It's just property to property. And I believe that's, yeah, be quiet. But we don't need access from the west if he can get it next to because coming he has in a from the street. Okay, there is a drive. No. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it, it, I believe if I'm following correctly, we're, if we're talking about coming in from 13th Street, from from Fairview. Well, what they're talking about, they said, come from the east front of the property. And all my question was, it looks like on this aerial photo, even though the lines are wherever they're at, that there is possibility that they could go from the backside, from the south, or from the west. Even though they're going to going across property, they have to get a, probably some kind of an easement. Scott, so just to hopefully help out. Uh, so it's Abbey Senior Care that owns the facility immediately to the west. That's kind of that X shape. And then the L-shaped parcel that goes down connects Waco and 13th Street on the north and east side of the liquor store that's on the corner. That L-shaped property is owned by, is under the same ownership as the X-shaped property. Okay. So, so I, I think I see Commissioner McKay's point, but it would be access from private property onto their private property and not, and there are no public access onto it. Okay. All I was trying to say is the gentleman said he tried to do anything he possibly could to make it work. And if he could get a, you know, a cross-lot cross agreement of some sort, that would be easier than paving 160 feet of driveway to get back and then pave it through the thing in the back. That's all I'm trying to say. I think if you look at the photographs, the one that shows the front facade of the building, it does look like there's an existing driveway going back along the north side. It's, there is a fence. There, I do understand there is a fence across that uh, property line. So currently couldn't drive through. Okay. You're talking Scott? about the west property line? Uh, the side that has the Abbey Care Center. Okay, that'd be the west. West, yes. Okay, Commissioner Warren. I'm going to start something here. I'm going to okay. make the approved per staff comment. Second. Uh, I have a motion of Commissioner Warren, a second from Commissioner Green. Uh, approve per staff comment. Any discussion on that motion? I would like to make. A substitute motion. Chair. Um, Commissioner Foster, substitute Scott. I'm sorry. I think Joe Johnson's trying to make it. Oh, Joe Johnson, are you present? I'm present now, but I did not hear it all, so I'll have to abstain. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, we have a substitute motion. Go ahead, Commissioner Foster. I would like to approve per staff comments, but with the additional condition that the parking area in the front yard be eliminated and all parking be behind the main building. I have a motion, substitute motion from Commissioner Foster, a second from Commissioner Williams Bay uh, for approval with the additional condition of moving the four required parking spaces to the rear of the home. Uh, Commissioner Blick discussion on this on your motion um, I have a house that has a driveway that goes all the way back to my back garage so I can park on that driveway so when you say that you need to have it behind that structure couldn't that individual still use his existing driveway that he has now so I would say just leave the parking on the driveway and in the back of the house 
willing to make that revision, yes. Okay. We have an adjustment to the substitute motion indicating the driveway could be used. The driveway where it doesn't impede the public sidewalk could be used to meet the parking agreement. And the second is agreeable. JR? So could we clarify that what we're really speaking of, the parking areas are the required parking spaces. So the driveway obviously will go from the public right away on Fairview back into the rear yard where the required parking spaces are located. Should they happen to park occasionally on the driveway, that's that's fine, but the required parking spaces would be behind the front of the house. Okay, the required parking spaces would be behind. So are we accepting the modification per staff comment to the motion, to the substitute motion? I have one question. Is it behind the house or behind the setback? Behind the main house. And where in that backyard they want to put them, I don't, I'm not that worried about it so long as they're behind the main structure. Is that how the code reads? Well, I, I guess my problem with that is any other neighborhood in this city, as long as you're parking on your driveway and you're not in the right public right of way, that's legal. As long as you're on your driveway and you're not blocking the sidewalk. Is that not... Correct. It's still it's still legal here, as I understand it. We're just saying the parking spaces that are required have to be in the back. The four parking spaces are that are okay, but they could park anywhere on that driveway or in the back. Addition. Jr. is smiling, but let's get clarification of does this meet the parking requirement? So, so Commissioner Hartman, to answer your question, the code talks about the front setback but I believe the motion is hinging on the location of the house and it's behind the house but the code is the front setback okay so do you intend your motion to be that the four required parking sp spaces would be in the back or that the driveway beyond the all, setback all would be behind the setback front yard setback I don't know what the setback is on this lot does anybody know 25 it should be 25 feet unless platted differently. As old as the plat is, I can't imagine it has a platted setback. Okay. Historic neighborhood, and there generally aren't setbacks at all. Okay. Is okay. my motion is the motion clear to everybody? Which motion? Why don't you substitute motion? Substitute motion. Let's maybe restate that okay. based on what we've heard. The substitute motion is to approve per staff comments with the additional condition that the four parking spaces required for three dwelling units on this lot all be located behind the main residence building to the west of the main residence building. And uh, you accept the motion? Okay, we have a substitute motion and acceptance. Any further discussion of this motion? Commissioner Warren. I understand the motion and I understand the, the goal that, that we're trying to achieve. Uh, I, I will be opposed to it from the standpoint is that we're creating a hardship for the neighborhood by virtue of the, the churches across the street. We're going to eliminate some off street park parking, um, not allowing house, not allowing them to park in the front yard is going to create a hardship. So uh, the staff, Basically, the, the staff's comments uh, in the report were silent on Front Street parking. It's it's uh, is not it's not legal now. It's, you can't use it for the for the four spaces, but there are people that are parking up and down on, on that street in, the, in their front yards all over the place. Any Excuse me. That ahead, church has Cunningham. a lot of parking spaces. Um, I doubt if they need if they need that much off street parking. And the other thing that bothers me about all these discussions is that that the historic Midtown district has their own master plan. Have we considered any of that? And I don't believe I don't believe it indicates that parking in the front yard is indicated. Any comments? Did staff consider the master plan that was developed? in conjunction with the city and the neighborhood and approved? Uh, we have a legal comment. 
I think that was in consideration with the HPC. That's not this. Historical this Preservation Board, Board was the consideration. Yeah, not this uh, body. OK. Thank you. OK, we have a substitute motion on the floor with a second. I would like to call the question and a roll call vote, please, for the substitute motion. Yes, ma'am. Fox? Aye. Newell? Aye. McKay? Aye. Green? Aye. Bill Johnson? Cannot vote because he didn't hear the full discussion, so that'll be an abstention. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All those Johnsons. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, I'm sorry. Mr. Johnson, you can vote now. Aye. Aye. Blick? Aye. Nix? Aye. Foster? Aye. Warren? Nay. And Joe Johnson indicated he would not be voting on this item. Correct. <laughs> and I will definitely need help on the count, please. Miles? Nay. Hartman? Aye. Cunningham? Nay. Williams Bay? Aye. I have the vote is 10 to 3. Motion passes. 10 3 1 abstention. 10 9 3 1 abstention. 10. 14th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. And thanks for those who came to give testimony. Next item uh, number 4.1, case conditional use 2022 37. Christina. Right. Madam Chair, before, yes. before we hear this, was there somebody that wanted to hear this case, or is this just me wanting to ask the uh, county yes. engineer a question? I believe we have people present who want to hear this case. Is that correct? Do we have people in the from the public who want to hear this case? Yes, 4.1. 4, no, 4.4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. Yes. Yes, we have others who want to hear this case, so... Okay. And Christina will give us the staff report on this case. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Christina Reith, Associate Planner again. Uh, this is case number zone 2022-0054 and con 2022-0039 out in the county. Um, we have TCRS as the applicant and MKEC Engineering as the agent. They are requesting a zone change from RR Rural Residential to SF20 Single Family Residential. And then each lot will have uh, a conditional use for an accessory apartment, as well as a neighborhood swimming pool. This is generally located Thank on the northeast corner of North 167th Street West and West Central Street North, also in the county known as West 4th Street North. And the recommendation is to approve with conditions. So the property is 151 acres in total and is located in unincorporated Sedgwick County. Subject site is currently in use as agricultural land. If we could go to the site plan, please. Thank you. So as you can see on the site plan here, the applicant intends to subdivide the property into 84 lots to, to develop single family residential dwellings on one acre lots, and each lot will have an accessory apartment. Accessory apartments are subject to supplementary use regulations at state. A maximum of one accessory apartment shall be allowed on the same lot as a single family dwelling. The appearance of the accessory apartment shall be compatible with the main dwelling unit. The accessory apartment shall remain ex accessory to and under the same ownership as a principal single dwelling unit, and the ownership shall not be divided or sold as a condominium. And water and sewer service provided to the accessory apartment shall not be provided as separate services from the main dwelling. The applicant has not submitted build building elevations that demonstrate this architectural compatibility between the accessory apartments and the main structures, but they will need to do so prior to the issuance of building permits. Um, if we look at the uh, zoning map, please. Um, properties to the north, south, east, and west are all zoned RR Rural Residential District. 
However, um, if we look at the bottom of the map here, within a quarter mile south of this, of this proposed development, on the east side of North 167th Street West, there is a subdivision proposed with 34 lots that are 1.16 acres in size, and they're zoned SF20 single family residential. Thus, um, single family residential district is not new to the area. According to the applicant, uh, or an agent for the applicant, sewer will be provided by alternative septic systems with lateral fields on each lot, and the water is provided by Rural Water District 4. The zone change and the conditional use requests are in partial conformance with the community investments plan. Um, the map identifies the majority of the area to be appropriate for agricultural or vacant uses. If we could go to the, um, community, or the future land use map, please. However, it also identifies the area as appropriate for new employment and residential uses. So based upon the information available at the time, we are recommending that Zone 22-54 be approved and Con 22-39 be approved subject to the following conditions. The accessory apartments shall conform to the supplementary use regulations, and so will the neighborhood swimming pool. The, neighborhood, the applicant will submit a site plan for the neighborhood swimming pool to the planning department, and they'll obtain all applicable building permits, and development and maintenance of the site shall be in conformance with the approved site plan. And if the zoning administrator finds that there is a violation of any of the conditions of the conditional use, they'll declare that the conditional use is null and void. And with that, I will stand for questions. Questions for staff from the commission? You had a question earlier, uh, Commissioner Green. Did we yeah, you want to repeat that question and see if we have a response? Yeah, I've got a question for the uh, county engineer, if he's online. Okay. Do we have an engineer online while we're looking for those? Uh, just yes. This is Glenn Packer. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Uh, here's a question for you. Hey, Lynn. Um, I was looking uh, at the the layout that we have on page five, understanding the fact that that's just uh, that is more like more or less for informational purposes. But my question concerns Woodland Hills, uh, the east, and it was platted back in. And my question on that would be Hickory Street uh, shows a temporary cul-de-sac uh, on the west edge of that plat was, a, and then also um, Reese Street, the north and south street, has a temporary cul-de-sac at the north end. Is it the intention of that plat to tie into any ex, uh, new developments to either the west or to the north? Uh, that is correct. We have looked at that. Um, in fact, a little additional information, the uh, temporary or the contingent dedication to the north of Woodland Hills actually is all floodplain development, uh, uh, or I should say floodplain, and would be con a... Um, very large undertaking to make that a connection to the north. Therefore, Hickory Street ends up really being the most uh, logical connection uh, for them, um, which would uh, be this uh, a plat or, or what will be a plat um, uh, here to the to the west side. Um, I've talked to the developer's uh, engineer about this, our agent about this. Uh, they are aware we are going to be making a, a, a request on the plat to make that connection or at least a contingent dedication uh, for that uh, to happen. Okay, thank you very much. And that answers your question. Okay, very good. Um, then we, uh, any other questions for staff? If not, we'll proceed to the applicant agent. Look how timely he is at the podium. Please state your name and oh, address for the record, and we'll have you'll have ten minutes. Yes, Brian Lindeback, MKC Engineering, four eleven North Web Road. On behalf of the owners and applicants, there are there are um, two of them. Uh, we are in agreement with staff comment. Um, 
and uh, w this plat has been filed. So you'll see a final plat, a one step final plat coming through uh, the subdivision hearing uh, com committee here soon. Uh, likewise, uh, um, planning commission as well. So uh, we are working with Lynn as well as the, we've worked with the fire chief on different aspects of the project as well already. Um, but uh, you know, right now this, this zoning hearing is uh, the first step and uh, we're looking to uh, have the option to have uh, accessory apartments and explain to the owner, the uh, neighbors here that that's what we were after. And uh, I think, think that it's resolved some of their questions as well. Questions for the applicants, Commissioner Foster. Brian, have you had any discussions with the developer or landowner to the east about that West Hickory Street connection, potential connection? Yes, we have. Do you care to characterize <laughs> them as positive? <laughs> well, uh, give us the goods. <laughs> sure. Um, this applicant uh, right here um, is, is uh, the Jacks, and I believe he's online. Uh, We've, we've uh, consulted with him about um, possibly getting access there. Uh, the unique um, placement of this property line uh, prohibits us from just dedicating a, a road and making that connection uh, without his input or his and her input. Um, there, uh, with that being on the center line, uh, we only have half street of a right of way to work with to tie into that street. And it was decided that, that they'd would prefer not to have any connection at that location. Um, and it's my understanding that some of the other neighbors would prefer not to have that access location. I know we've had some cases recently that have had this very same issue. And, uh, you know, our, our, our applicant has been working directly with, uh, with the two, the two property owners have been working together uh, to talk about the issue. But uh, at this point, I don't, I don't believe there's a desire to connect, make a, a physical connection. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Other questions, Commissioner Green? I know that my uh, feelings on, the, on this plat, or I'm sorry, on this zoning are to go ahead and, and approve the zoning, but um, at least at this point, but I just wanted that connection option possibility possible requirement to at least be out there for when it does come to the subdivision committee. Okay, Commissioner Blick. The question I have is that cul-de-sac down Hickory Street over there, it looks like it's a little bit further away from the property line. There's quite a bit of a gap. Do you know about how far a distance that is from the property line to that edge of that cul-de-sac, rough? Um, roughly, it's probably 180 or one somewhere thereabouts, 180 feet, yeah. Commissioner Warren? This is a valid discussion on that, but I'm not sure this is the right place. Where we're, where we're, where we're on a zoning case, I would recommend that we keep our discussion on, on the, the zoning issue, and we'll, we'll come back to the cul-de-sac at the next stage. Okay. I agree. All right. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, we have members of the public who'd like to speak on this item. Please come forward uh, to the podium and state your name and address, and you will have three minutes to give your testimony. Thank you. Joyce Pawnee Lane. Um, I am the... Um, homeowner on the other half of the street. Um, I live at um, Hickory, Hickory and um, the tree line, so to speak. So we've been in our home, we'll be there 24 years, October 3rd. We bought the property just shy of seven acres because we were at the nucleus of that development. We are in the corners. We bought it for security, to be out in the country, to be quiet. Honestly, I wasn't very excited to see farmland um, be sold for homes. Um, I'm a farmer's daughter, and there's nothing better than to see farmland. So to see this tree line to be filled with homes and then the possibility of apartments, and, and I know that it's being written so that um, 
homes can be multi um, facilitating home or families. But when you grow, when you go out to the county and you go out to the country to live and to build a home, only for the city to come out and be on the other side of your tree line, it's a little disappointing. So I strongly um, ask the board to not want Hickory to go through to this new development. Um, um, it's, it's my home, and I really would like to keep my home as I, I put time and money and, and energy into it. I, I think when I sit back and I listen to this conversation today, I ask each of you to consider if what's being put toward the board is your front yard, is your neighbor. And I guess that's what I kind of, you know, you, it's 151 acres, and you're looking at putting, what, 131 homes there? And then some of these homes can facilitate apartments? I'm sorry, I, I just ask you to, to be um, the, the homeowner with me and consider this. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Yeah, Commissioner I, Warren Green. I don't, I don't have a question. Just wanted to make sure that um, my comments uh, were not uh, concerning the zoning of this property. The zoning is a separate issue from the platting. I just wanted to be make people aware of the fact that, that there could okay. be some issues with that. So this is zoning only, nothing about Hickory Street. Yeah, so the zoning case before us is just, is it appropriate for this land to be used for residential right. purposes? And, um, and, I, and I understand that, that okay. but the two are connected. They two are linked. And when you talk about fire and safety, one right. chases the other. Right. Commissioner Williams Bay, you have a question? Yes, where's your property in relationship to this site? I am. You can use the mouse. Sorry. Today. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna. So yes, I we're am. gonna get the pointer to that spot so we can hear what you say as you point. Sure. Thank I'm you. sorry. I really was planning on just staying in the crowd. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is my residence right here. It's one five nine two two West Hickory Street. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Scott, did you have a comment? Yeah, one, one piece of conversation that's happened is that, that during this dialogue, there's been comments about the street connection in Hickory and the relationship between the zoning and the subdivision, right? Because the subdivision process is a process of laying out the properties and where the utilities and the transportation connections are going to take place. The zoning is what can the land be used for? And so I think one of the questions that's come up is, in talking about this and those connections is what does what do the subdivision regulations require in terms of connections and so what I've asked JR to do is go and get Neil to be able to address any questions that should come up okay. about that another comment that was raised was that this could be potentially apartments and I understand this is 84 individual residential lots with accessory dwelling units. Can we have a staff report on the definition of the accessory dwelling unit, please? Just so that we're clear on what that does allow. Sure, so an accessory dwelling unit is, uh, it's a, well, it's accessory to the main structure. Um, they do have to be compatible in terms of, um, in architecture, and they have to be connected um, through water and sewer. They can't be sold individually as a condominium. Um, and there can only be one on-site per property. Which lends that they're generally not rentals, but rather an extension of the home. Yes, that's correct. For, okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay, we have another speaker in the audience who would like to speak on this. Oh, Neil, do you want to answer the question about uh, resident the requirements for access? Yes, that... Uh street that was discussed on that north east right, yeah northeast portion that uh, we did receive the plat that will be discussed next week and that street is 1330 feet long exceeding the 1200 foot length limitation in the subdivision regulations and based on that County Public Works is requiring a connection to Hickory Street. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, we have another other speakers who would like to speak on this item. Okay, uh, do we have anyone participating virtually who would like to speak on this item? Please state your name and address for the record. I believe we had someone check in. Okay, hearing none. Um, the applicant uh, can have a rebuttal for of two minutes if any any additional comment. Okay, thank you. I'll bring it back to the commission for discussion or a motion. Commissioner Blick. I have a question for the applicant. She can come up real quick. Sorry. This just uh, do you know how about approximate how big that pond is? Acreage wise, uh, we, we are going to be rebuilding the pond. I'll tell you oh, that okay. much. That, uh, that might answer my question. It's very then. shallow and uh, silted in, so okay. I would guess it's in the the eight acre range, maybe in that ballpark. It uh, is. Is the natural flow, is it going to be just straight south of that, or is it so the flow kind of the, through there? The flow comes like through this way, and then there's also a ridge line right about here, and then this flow comes across through here like that. So there's two two drainage ways on this property, and you'll see a little bit more on that next week. <laughs> okay. No, nope. yeah. I was just wondering about that flow and stuff. Sure. If it can handle. So cool. Yep. Thanks. Commissioner yep. Warren, I have a question. No, just a motion to Oh, uh, Commissioner problem. McKay, did you have a question or a? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Linda Beck, this is going to be rural water district, correct? At this point, there has been discussions with the city of Wichita to serve this property with city water. That that conversation has been fairly extensive, but it hasn't reached a uh, determination just yet. Um, that there is a possibility that city water could serve this this property out here. Is this rural water district capable of, of giving emergency water service like for fire? They would not be able to serve um, fire to this property at this point, as far as we're aware. So there would be no provision at this time, whether it's the zoning or the platting, for that protection? Yeah, we did. I have met with the fire chief, Cedric County, and he is uh, happy that we were going to plat. Uh, this property with paved streets, um, and we've met with the, him on the width of the streets, and he's actually okay with the, the length of the cul-de-sac. So, but uh, we'll go. For, we'll talk about that more next week. Okay, Commissioner Warren. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. A second from Commissioner Hartman. Uh, any further discussion? Jack, can I speak? Uh, who is? Who am I hearing? I'm Kenneth Jack. I am. Oh. One of the applicants for uh, under the CON 2022-39. Mr. Jack, I apologize greatly. We called for public comment, and I didn't hear anyone chime in. And now we've already moved to a motion. Can I have I'm sorry, legal? I'm, I think that um, my my uh, I was trying to to chime in. Then I found that the that I was muted. Oh, so, sorry. Um, okay. Uh, I would, uh, I'd appreciate being able to have to, to, to say a few words. Okay. We'll go ahead and hear your testimony because we haven't called the vote at this point. Is that, can we do that? Madam Chair, I believe he indicated he's an applicant, so I don't know how much time. Oh, he's the applicant. Okay. That's correct. We've already heard from your agent, Mr. Jack, and so your time was included with the agent's time. And if, if I could be permitted to, to speak as a member of the public, that would be and great. His, did the applicant go over 10 minutes? Does anybody have the time on that? Uh, the, I guess I would say the applicant didn't go over 10 minutes. Okay. There, um, if the planning commission saw it as appropriate, um, I think you could go back and give the two minutes of rebuttal okay. to this applicant. Okay. Um, I would suggest you take a vote uh, to waive your uh, rules of procedure and allow this to take place after the motion has been because that's out of the usual order i would move to waive our procedures to allow this speaker i have a motion to waive procedure so that we could allow the speaker second. two minutes for rebuttal a second from commissioner nix uh, uh all in favor please indicate by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay Hearing none, that motion passes. So, Mr. Jack, you have two minutes, please, to make your presentation. Yes, on the on the 
what's been spoken about is the access to Hickory. Uh, prior to this meeting, uh, arrangements were being made for uh, for Hickory to be used as as access for my northeast track and not as access to the the larger tract. I, I've heard just today that uh, that there's going to be a requirement that Hickory be used as access to the larger tract, uh, which which is not agreeable to my wife and and to me. Uh, we we do know that if if there is um, going to be a use of hickory to access the larger tract, uh, that would entail dedication of, of a portion of, of our ground to, to that access way, which we also don't agree to. Uh, I've had my next door neighbor, Joyce Lane, speak about how she is opposed to this access of hickory to the larger tract. And she's my neighbor. I, I wanted her to understand that that I've been working and obtaining uh, promises, which I believe that, that that's not going to happen. And today is the first that I've heard that uh, my land is being planned to be, to be used for access to the greater tract. And that has not been agreed by either my wife, Allison, or, or me. So there, there is a disconnect. I, I know that uh, this is zoning and uh, but uh, future actions that are not agreeable have been spoken of in this meeting as going forward. And I didn't want to leave the impression that that, that was agreeable to Allison and to me, Allison Jack and myself, Kenneth Jack. Thank you for your testimony. Your time is up at this point. And again, this is a zoning case. The motion on the floor is to pass the zoning case with a second. Um, and the access will be addressed as a public safety issue and access in the subdivision case that begins next week. Um, clarify, Commissioner Warren. I want to clarify that my motion did include the recommended action, the uh, conditions within the staff report. Okay, thank you. And the second accepts that addition and clarification. Thank you. Any further discussion from the commission at this point? Then I would call for a vote. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The zoning motion and conditional use passes with conditions as stated. Thank you. Um, that concludes that portion of our agenda. Item 5.1 is an action on the Unified Zoning Code related to home occupations daycare. This is going to be deferred. Um, you should be aware it will likely come back as a public hearing item on the Nove at the November 17th meeting. So we will not hear that case today. That's DER 2022 triple quadruple zero nine. Um, we do have one other matter to become uh, before the committee before we adjourn today. And that is that I have made an appointment of subdivision chairman uh, uh, to Deborah Foster, and she has agreed to that appointment for a one year of service. I thank you, Deborah, for accepting that position. Um, that's effective immediately and ongoing, and uh, everybody wants to applaud Deborah for her work in that role, correct? Thank you. And uh, 